The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to your Lord. When Mary, the sister of Lazarus, came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I am the bread, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though he or she dies. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, first of all, may I take this opportunity to convey my heartfelt condolences to the family of our brother, Claudia Bonucci, his wife, his brothers and sisters, wherever they may be, his children, grandchildren, relatives, friends, and all of you present here this morning. Thank you for coming. Your presence here today 
is indeed a sign of love, a sign of concern and support to Claudio and the whole family. And now, united together in prayer, we pray that Almighty God may strengthen you and console you, the whole family, during this time of grief. Dear brothers and sisters, we know that there is death. Whether we like it or not, the truth is that there is death. And so, first, with the reality of death, sometimes life might seem ab absurd or meaningless. But our Christian faith tells us that despite death, life is not absurd or meaningless. Life has a meaning. The life we live here now on earth is just a preparation for the next life. And when we die, when me and you die, life is only changed, not ended. Claudius, Claudius' life is changed. He has entered eternal life with his miracle in heaven. After 91 years here on earth, Claudio, while alive here on earth, did his work according to the abilities given to him by God. Claudio had a great love for his family and neighbor. According from the testimony I've heard, Claudio was a kind man and generous person, assist, assisting the needy, the vulnerable in society, and so on. And this reminds us what, what Jesus said, that just as you did it to one of the least of my brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. And that's what Claudio did. He had a kind and generous heart to the needy in the society. Claudio, by this, means that he could see God he could see Christ in those who needed his assistance. And so he assisted them. And by this, we are also challenged. Those of us who are alive now and living in this world, we are challenged. As we live here on earth, let us always remember that we are not here permanently. We are not sure that we are, we are all sojourners and we are on transit towards heaven. So when our time comes, my time, your time comes to die, what good legacy shall we leave behind like 
Claudio. The scripture readings today remind us that we are created in the likeness of God and to God we belong and to God we shall return. As Claudio did, we shall return. And if we know this, that one day we shall return to our maker. If you know and believe that one day for sure we shall leave this earth, what are we going to live? How are we living our lives as Christians? Like Claudio, can we be able to see God, to see Jesus in our neighbor? especially those in need, those who are vulnerable, can we see Jesus in them and try to help them, to assist them in their need? And that's why Jesus said, just as you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. So when we shall return to God, as Claudio did, what are we leaving behind? What good legacy are we leaving behind? St. Paul in the second reading tells us that nothing can separate us from God our maker, not even death. And indeed, all the readings for this liturgy today remind us that we belong to God, our maker, and to God we shall return. Jesus in the Gospel reading of today from John assures us that there is life after death and the resurrection of the dead. And just as Christ died and rose again from the dead on the third day, so also for those who believe and trust in God, for those who believe and trust in Christ, and for those who die in Christ. Today, as we accompany our brother Claudio to his heavenly kingdom, let us once again reflect on our personal lives, our relationship with God, our relationship with Christ our Savior and Lord, our relationship with one another. And maybe ask ourselves, we as Christians, are we living a life worthy of Christ? Are we united by the love of Christ? as sons and daughters of God? Are we able to see Jesus in the lives of others? Are we charitable to those who need our assistance? Are we living a life that is pleasing to God? We know that God created us with a purpose. He created each one of us with a purpose. And so we pray as we accompany our brother Claudio to his heavenly kingdom, that by the grace of God, as Christians, 
as believers, as disciples of Christ, we may always be able to live a righteous life, to live a life that is pleasing to God. So that when our time comes, of which we don't know the day or the hour or the year or the month, we may be found righteous before the eyes of God. And now we pray, may the soul of Claudio Bonucci rest in eternal peace. Amen. We now stand for the prayers of the faithful, and this prayer will be read to us by Wayne. The response to our intentions is, Lord, hear our prayer. Together? Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church. Pope Francis and all those who minister and care for the people of the church, may they always be a reflection of God's light and love.